Okay, welcome to another edition of In Conversation here on Rock Show Critique. Today's special guest, the only way I can describe him is if you don't know Jack, you don't know Jack Russell. <laughs> How you doing, Jack? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. How about yourself? Uh, hang in, trying to hang in here with everything that's going on right now. Yeah, right. So, um... Yeah, we're going to talk real quick here. Uh, we, I see we got a new album coming out. If you want to like give everybody the, the rundown on, on the new album and uh, everything here. Yeah, sure. We uh, Back in 96, we released an album, a live album called Great Zeppelin. And um, I always wanted to do a sequel to that. So we went in and we went in the studio and uh, we recorded live in the studio. Um, because it just wasn't, we couldn't get on the road, you know, traveling around, um, you know, uh, it just wasn't viable for us to go out and record live. So we did it live in the studio. Um, we recorded a bunch more Zeppelin stuff and it's called Great Zeppelin too. Um, we did some other tracks and touched on some other, uh, you know, recordings of theirs. And it was a lot of fun. It came out fantastic. I mean, it really is a good record. Um, and, um, so that's about it. That's where it is, man. It's a great, great album. Great Zeppelin two. Pick it up. All right. Um, I see that it's actually coming out with this Friday, if you can get it through Amazon and uh, all the other outlets and everything. Yep. Absolutely. All right. You also, uh, we came out with another album last year, um, Acoustic Bites Once Bitten. Tell us about um, how that came to be and how you guys processed that one. Well, you know, uh, I wanted to hear the songs acoustically, you know, um, like Unplugged. Uh, I always felt that, you know, the true test of a good, a true test of a song is to do it acoustically. And if it comes off, then you have something to work with. So, you know, I decided to do the record, uh, you know, Unplugged. And um, um, I love the way it came out. It turned out just beautifully. Um, so it's a funny thing is some of the songs I thought were that weren't going to translate, you know, I was worried about them translating to a acoustic format um, came out better than some of the ones that I thought would, you know, it's uh, it, it like uh, the heavier songs. I thought, how are we going to do this? You know, and uh, they came out wonderful. I was just really, uh, really pleased with the album. It's a great record. I mean, it's uh, it was a lot of fun to make and uh, it's a lot of fun to listen to. Yeah, definitely it is. I was surprised that, you know, that you, you went back and did that. It's just, uh, you know, a real good treat for any fan from that era, especially with that particular album. Yeah, I mean, I plan on doing it to the other albums as well. I want to do uh, I want to do uh, Twice Shine. I want to do Hooked as well. Yeah, yeah it's funny how you mentioned those yeah, two. <laughs> It's just funny. Yeah, it's funny how you mentioned uh, Twice Shy and Hook, because that's kind of my next question here. Um, Once Bitten, Twice Shy and Hook. It's like those are what many fans would consider your biggest uh, commercial success right in that area there. Um, but, uh, you know, that's probably where the main, a lot of the fans consider the best albums a great white. But uh, if you dig a little deeper, you know, it yeah. seems like you got three other good ones that were recorded pretty much right next to each other that really, in my opinion, probably have some of your best written songs on it. And then, in other words, I'm talking about Sail Away, uh, Let It Rock, and of course, uh, Can't Get There From Here. Yeah, Can't Get There From Here is uh, my favorite Great White album, actually. Um, aside from uh, the new album that Jack Russell's Great White put out, um, you saw it coming. But uh, yeah, Can't Get There From Here is a brilliant, brilliant album. I, I hate this. Sound like I'm tooting my own horn, but I, I really, <laughs> I really love that record. I'm really pleased with it, and I was uh, happy with everything that was uh, was on it. Every song to me was a, a, a really a treat, you know. And I still, I still love listening to it. If that says anything about the record. Oh yeah, it's definitely one of the ones I always have on repeat here. Um, take us back. To, we'll start with Sail Away because that is the first album chronologically here. Um, Take us through uh, the songwriting process, because it seems like from Psycho City to Sail Away, it seems like something, obviously the music scene changed and everything with the, the grunge and all that stuff. But um, how did you guys, uh, how did you start attacking uh, the process of writing for Sail Away? 
Um, you know, it was just one of those things. We wanted to do something that was more, uh, more kind of a Eagles kind of thing. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, so we decided to make it a little bit more mellow, um, more more uh, semi-acoustic, more leaning toward that side. Um, the songwriting was just as, uh, you know, we did it as we always do. You know, uh, one of us will come up with an idea and uh, bring it to the, the rest of the guys. And, you know, it was always the core of the band was myself, Mark, Michael, and Alan Niven, our, our uh, old manager, who was also a great songwriter. And we worked together a lot on a lot of tunes. <clears throat> um, so that was that was the way we wrote, you know. Now, what songs are you proud of on that album? Like, which ones kind of stand out for you personally? Well, Sail Away for sure. Um, Gone with the Wind. Those are my two favorite tracks on that record. Um, I just think they, they were just wonderful tunes. I, Gone with the Wind, I can't uh, say enough about. I just, I love the, the you know, the, the sadness of it, the soul of it. I just love the way it came out. Um, and Clarence Clemens' sax solo was just brilliant. You know, um, those are my two favorites. Okay. And uh, obviously then uh, by the time 96 rolled around, rolled around we're here into uh, Let It Rock came out. And um, to me, out of all the great white albums, I feel that that is the one album that a lot of fans just don't know about. I mean, if they actually were able to listen to it and actually, you know, you know, it's just like it never got any airplay, really. And it, but it's such a great album overall. You know, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, the song Easy. It got played on a radio station in Chihuahua, Mexico, and it was the number two song of the year. And we went down there and played a baseball stadium. Um, it was just, it was amazing. You know, um, I think if the, we would have got some airplay off that record, it would have done really well. You know, it was a, a really good album. Um, it, it, it was, we got our rock back, you know, after Sail Away, it was like we came back home again, you know? Um, and that was the first album we did without Alan as a manager and songwriter. We did everything ourselves and it was a, you know, a bit of freedom at the same time, you know, it was a kind of a cleansing process, really. Um, we, uh, it, it was like just us writing, you know, and uh, it mm -hmm. was, it was a lot of fun. We really had a great time writing and recording that record. Um, I mean, take, you know, uh, easy, um, uh, live uh, no on my world um what's the other song um lives in chains that what i was mm -hmm. thinking of mm -hmm. um you know songs like that uh you know um god i'm trying to think of the songs on the album uh where is the love that's another great where song is the love? yeah that was, that's a great song too i love that tune um i mean the whole album is full of really great music you know if you're if you're a great white fan, you know you'll get it. You know, right? Well, you're not. You know, <laughs> one, of those, it's one of those things. You know, but it, it's uh, I think it's 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 a very great a very good album. It's got something for everybody. You know, true. Yeah, I mean, hand on the triggers, classic uh, guitar playing on that one. Pain overload, and then obviously uh, the closer on the album, Miles Away. Um, that one was that one. What was that one about? That that song. It was about just being on the road, you know, and uh, missing your family. Um, there was one part in there uh, talks about, you know, Kendall used to watch his kid grow up on videos his wife would send him, you know, um, like, so I wrote a line of something about my boy at home took his first steps today. I watched him on the video before I leave to play, yeah. you know, so uh, it, it, it was a, uh, you know, it was pretty uh, heart wrenching, really. I mean, you know, because you know, when you were on the road, you really miss your family. You know, and, and you know, we. I remember for that record, we were on the road for 16 months. Wow. You know, and that's a long time. You know, so it was a uh, a perfect song for that tour. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Um... Yeah, definitely. That's that's. I I thought it was. That's exactly what it was about. I never really uh, got to ask you about that before. So now can't get further from here. Obviously, uh, <laughs> that that's the album that you mentioned as your favorite all, all time great white album. What um 
which songs uh, were the ones on that one that did it for you? Oh, God. Uh, um, uh, what's the name of that track? I'm sorry, I'm having a I'm trying to remember all the records we made. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you made a lot Silent, of them. Silent Night. Oh, yeah. Um, that was a great, wonderful tune. Uh, um, Saint Lorraine. Um, uh, oh, God, what's the name of that song? Hang on. Um, Loveless Age. Um, God, I'm trying to think here. You got a track list in front of you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, obviously, the two songs that kind of got some airplay, uh, Rolling Stone and uh, Ain't No Shame. I, I, I really no feel I, I love Ain't No Shame. Yeah, Ain't No Shame is a great song. That was uh, supposed to be the money song, according to the label. But unfortunately, what happened was the money they made off uh, Rolling Stone, because we had a number six single with, with Rolling Stone. You know what I mean? And um, they made uh, quite a bit of money off the, the album. And they took that money and they, instead of putting it into us for Ain't No Shame, they put it into Rat because they signed Rat for more money. And they're trying to get the Rat album off the ground and it still sunk. So they didn't have enough money to push Ain't No Shame. So we got screwed. I mean, that's why I turned down the next uh, record with the with Columbia. You know, they asked me if I want to do another album. I told them no. <laughs> I mean, how many people do that, you know? <laughs> probably a stupid move but i did and yeah, that was when you were on portrait along along and uh was john kaladner involved in that yeah john kaladner was his label yeah great guy wonderful guy i uh, love john just a fantastic human being can't say enough about him now you actually worked with jack blades on that album yeah he was a producer and uh really helped you know he wrote a lot of songs with us and uh he did a splendid job really did um, great guy just full of energy you know great songwriter as well yeah have you ever thought about uh, doing another album with him down the road you know what that would be great you know um if 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 you know something came about to where we had uh you know the time and and the, you know the place and everything kind of all the stars lined up you know uh, it would be wonderful yeah, that seems how, that's how it is nowadays with everything you know <laughs> it's tough yeah. you know it's not easy to get everybody together sometimes no it's not especially with you know the whole COVID thing and it's uh you know it's really a travesty what's going on right now you know yeah how many shows have you guys done so far this year we've done i don't know maybe 15 something like that just a handful you know and how, 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 how is it being out on the road? Is it a little scary? Oh, it's great. No, I mean, you know, I'm not really scared. I guess I probably should be, but, you know, I'm, I'm cautious, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I take precautions, um, but I'm, I'm really not scared so much. Um, you know, I think if you uh, take care of yourself and you watch what you're doing and you have your, you know, your eyes open and, and you know, you, you take the steps you need to take, I think, you know, you can be, it can be pretty safe. All right. I just want to talk about uh, one more album that you recorded. And this one is actually uh, your first solo album, uh, Shelter Me. Uh, Shelter that, Me. Yep. Yeah, that was a really fun record to do. Um, that's one of my favorite albums as well. Uh, it was just a blast to uh, get out there and play with some other musicians and, and, uh, you know, kind of do my own thing. And, and it was a, uh, I think it was a really good record, you know. Um, and of course, you know, I think everything we do is really good. <laughs> <laughs> or I wouldn't release it, right? Yeah. You know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had uh, some great musicians on there. You know, Myron Grombacher on the drums, who played with Pat Benatar. He's a frightening drummer. You wouldn't think, you know, he's playing with <laughs> Pat Benatar. You wouldn't think the guy had any chops, but he's just amazing. I mean, blistering drummer. Um, Tim Boger, you know, uh, played bass from, you know, Cactus and, and uh, Jeff Beck, Boger, Beck in a piece. Um, and um, Matt Johnson played guitar. It was a dear friend of mine. Um, played with Great White for a while. And um, Michael Lardy um, worked on it was, as well with rhythm guitar and keyboards. And, uh, 
so it was a it was a great band you know it really uh really uh was a lot of fun recording with them now was that album recorded right around the time of let it rock or shortly thereafter it was recorded um gosh it was right after let it rock i went in the studio immediately after let it rock and uh recorded shelter me yeah because i think it's the same production team as that did actually the let it rock album pretty much pretty much i mean uh it was uh me michael a guy named uh dito uh godwin and um and yeah that was the same on the let it rock album i believe yeah, now on, on that album, you got obviously you got a bunch of great songs. Uh, some of the ones that I feel that are great on there, obviously the title cut, uh, Roll with the Tide. That's another uh, yeah. <laughs> another gem that, uh, unfortunately, I wish you would play that one live sometime. <laughs> um, when you look, when I look into your eyes, the album that closes out the album, and then um, you did you did Save Your Love. What was the reasoning by adding Save Your Love on that album? I wanted to do it acoustically you know, mm -hmm. with strings. And that was the way I wrote it originally. I wrote it to be recorded like that. And, you know, we ended up putting drums to it and getting rid of the strings. So, you know, I always wanted to hear how it would sound the way I originally wrote the song, the way I originally intended it to be. And um, that was the reasoning behind that. All right, very good. Now, two of you, the uh, bigger bands, I guess, that uh, you always mentioned in your interviews that inspired you were obviously Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin. Obviously, we know about the Zeppelin thing. Um, what, what's your favorite album by each artist? Um, God, probably <laughs> uh, Physical Graffiti by Zeppelin and Toys in the Attic by Aerosmith. Okay. Now, um, another question I had. Now, you, got, you guys were actually in a movie early on in your career <laughs> <laughs> tell us about how that all came to be um that was something that the label uh set up um and it was uh looking back it was quite embarrassing you know i mean it was uh it was a uh, you know a, a part where I, we played like this band uh this backup band to this singer named dude you know and uh, he gets hit in the head with a coconut loses his memory and we have to go on and, and uh, the maid sings, you know, Mary Clayton, I think it was, or, or and um, it was, uh, you know, you got me playing guitar and I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm all <laughs> over the neck, you know what I mean? And my, my bass player goes, Jack, you don't play guitar like that, man. You, you know, you don't go all over the neck playing chords, you know? I go, well, I'm not a guitar player, dude, give me a break. So yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, pretty embarrassing looking back on it but you know they paid us a bit of money so well at the time you know obviously you know, who would have, you know not too many bands got into the movies like that so i mean that was no, no it was uh it was cool i mean you know we got there at 6 a.m for makeup we sat around till nighttime you know so it was kind of funny it was like you know why call us down here this early you know we were, <laughs> we went on stage we were you know half in the bag you know <laughs> so was that just a one day type type shoot then yeah, yeah, it was just one day for us. <laughs> yeah, that, of course, that movie we're mentioning is Made to Order. That's the Ali Sheedy movie. Yeah. All right. I've seen in a recent interview where um, Pier Stephen Piercy mentioned uh, how great you still sound and how your voice has held up after, even after all the things that have happened to you and everything. What do you do? Do you do anything special to keep it? in good shape what what, what do you yeah, do yeah you know I, I warm up i have a series of warm-ups i do uh you know before the show during the day and then i warm down afterwards you know and it keeps my voice in pretty good shape you know that was nice of steven i didn't i didn't know that um that was really cool thank you for letting me know about that i'll have to thank him when i see him again <laughs> um yeah you know i just i just you know warm up and and take care of my voice. I don't smoke anymore. I don't drink, you know, so, you know, the voice, uh, voice seems to work pretty often, you know, I don't really have too many problems with it. All right. So now let's get into this uh, music industry situation. Now, obviously it seems like, you know, everything's totally changed from back in the day when you first started, but it seems like it's just, you know, really different now, you know, you guys used to be able to make albums and make a lot of money off albums. And now basically, it seems like you have to tour to survive for the most part. 
Yeah, well, that's exactly it. I mean, everything's backwards, you know. Uh, there is no money in record sales, at least not for artists of our ilk, you know. Um, touring is is become uh, the way you earn a living, you know. And um, it's a whole different animal, you know. Uh, a lot of bands, unfortunately, can't tour. You know, they don't have the following and and or they have such a small following, they can't really make any money at it, you know or make a little bit of money and just squeak by, you know, having day jobs and whatnot, you know? So I consider myself very blessed that I'm still able to do what I do at my age, you know? All right. Do you have any um, hopes to get on a big tour someday once touring kind of resumes itself back to normal, or are you just satisfied with, you know, just doing what you're doing right now with you occasional know, festivals, you know? If something came along, you know, that made sense, you know, I would consider it, but it would have to be something really cool, you know, because it's just a lot of work, you know, and it really beats you up physically, yeah. emotionally, you know. Um, so it would have to be something very special for me to, to want to go back out on the road or bus and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, like I said, I, I would consider it. Um, I really enjoy the way it's working now, though. It's uh, I, I like flying, you know, in on the weekends and playing a couple of shows and flying back home. You know, I get time with my family and, and you know, I also get time with my rock and roll family, you know. So uh, it uh, covers all the bases. Yeah. So um, back going back to touring, um, do any, you have any highlights from some of the tours that you have been on in the past? Do any stand out? Sure. Uh, Great White Tesla, you know, the double header tour where we did the co-headline thing. That was a, a really fun tour. You know, there were great guys. And I mean, we used to play softball like every day off and, you know, uh, our us against them, their crew and our crew and, you know, the bands. And it, we just had a blast, you know. Um, White Snake, that was a really great time. You know, they were great, great guys to hang out with and, and play with. And they treated us really, really well, you know. Mm -hmm. um uh, night ranger that was a great time i mean every, every band we've ever toured with scorpions they've all been really really great you know except for kiss kiss <laughs> was the only tour that you know i was like oh this just kind of sucks you know uh, the band was paul stanley was really cool but gene simmons was a turd you know <laughs> now how how was your tour with uh poison rat and um la guns that was actually the the one that you toured when you 99. were rat. yeah with rat you guys were both uh, on portrait at the time and the albums actually started touring before the album actually came out i won you know I, I remember that the album came out a little later into the tour you started it like around may right yeah no it was that was a great time i mean it was a lot of fun that was a really fun tour um all the bands were really cool to hang out with and and we all got along great there was no uh Nobody walked around with big egos, you know. It, it was a, a really fun tour. Everybody had a blast. I mean, remember Fourth is Live, we had a fireworks fight, and you know, we're all backstage, we're all in the parking lot of this one gig, one arena, and we're all shooting fireworks at each other, you know, bottle rockets. Jeez. We're hiding behind the bus doors, you know what I mean? Everybody's firing up bottle rockets, and people are getting popped and hit, and it was really fun. It was a great time. Now, uh, obviously, do you see a, a lot of egos nowadays when you're out on the road as opposed to back in the day? No, not so much. Everybody kind of has toned it down because, you know, it's they realize that, you know, you're not better than anybody else. And I think uh, the way rock and roll has been the last number of years, it's really kind of put people on the, you know, on the reality check. It's like, dude, you know, you're not better than anybody else. It's like, <laughs> We're all here just trying to make make a living, you know. So uh, it's kind of made everything it kind of there's a, there's a sense of equality now. Yeah, I, I think in the past too, I think some things uh, certain people did just to kind of get the headlines too to help uh, make themselves, oh, sure. you know. Obviously, that was a lot of it. Yeah, be a dick and get get in the press. Yeah, yeah, because there. I mean. Uh, that was that seemed to be a lot of it coming out of the West Coast over there back in the early, uh, mid '80s, sure. I would say. Sure, absolutely. I would. I would totally agree with you. 
So do you have any uh, last things you want to mention to the fans here? Any uh, other upcoming projects? Uh, do you have a book in the works? What's going on with all that yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, I do have a book in the works right now. It's uh, being finished here. It's uh, called uh, the Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. Hmm. Um, that'll be out within the next few months. It's uh, really, really cool. Um, it, it's got like, you know, a lot of... Uh, quotes and different stuff and, and stories from different people, you know, different rock stars and, and uh, you know, stories about me. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be really, really special. You know, I'm like, I'm really excited to put it out. And uh, so that's coming out and we're right in the middle of our uh, new album, Jack Russell's Great White. We're working on that right now. Um, have another, another project where I'm recording some 70s stuff 60 stuff and also some uh, Dante Fox stuff I'm re-recording. Uh, I'm gonna put that out just for fun. You know, I'm, I'm doing st some stuff just for the hardcore fans, you know? And um, I'm at the point in my life where I don't really care what people think or what they say. So I'm just gonna have fun recording music. If I wanna record a song, I'm gonna record it, you know? <laughs> and regardless of what anybody else thinks, you know, I don't really care. Um, and I got a project for <clears throat> Frontiers I'm working on with a, a producer. They they wrote all the songs and they just sent it to me. I'm just singing them. So, oh, you know, okay. however it comes out is uh, not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, before I let you go, there's just one other question I got for you. And this is, um, I guess, a good question to end it on here. Tell us about how you guys came to record Wasted Rock Ranger and how that song kind of became like, almost like a theme song for you guys. Well, you know, it was first played for me by uh, Slash and Duff from Guns N' Roses. Oh. And they go, Jack, this song is totally you, man. It's like your whole life story. And I listened to it and I go, we got to record that. And they go, yeah, you should. So I brought it to the band and, you know, everybody went like, yeah, that's great, man, let's do it. So we recorded it, you know, it just became like this mantra, you know, for a uh, great white. Um, and we used to play it a lot at the shows and occasionally we'll play it, you know, just for fun. A lot of fans will come up and ask us to play it. And so we'll go, all right, we'll play it. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing it a few times. You kind of saved it for, for an encore there, which was awesome. Yeah. It, it was because you you didn't play it at every show, obviously. So it seemed like when you do play it, it's almost like a special occasion, kind of. Sure, sure, absolutely. All right. Well, that's all I got for you. You got anything for me? I, uh, <laughs> no, Joseph. I think everything's good, man. Thank you. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, and uh, uh, thank you. Years, as always. All right. Thank you very much for everything. <laughs>